Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. This week we're going to give you a tour of our car and caravan and a couple of pointers for living life full time on the road. So why don't you go and get yourself a cold drink, get your feet up for about the next 30 to 40 minutes and come and join us for the adventure. Hi, I'm Steve. And I'm Alison. We decided a couple of years ago that we'd work hard and save all of our money and start living life on our own terms. So we bought a caravan and hit the road on a trip for two all around Australia. So why not come and join us every week for our adventures? Well, as we said in the intro, today is all about our touring setup. It's about our car and our caravan. It's not about the inside of our caravan, though. We did shoot a video on that a few months ago, and I'll drop a link in for you so you can watch that if you haven't already seen it. You can hear a lot of noise going on in the background at the moment. I'll give you a quick look at what that is. There you go. But you have to wait for next week because that's next week's episode. Um, yeah, so today's all about our touring setup. We get a lot of questions about the car and the caravan, the way that we set it up for full time travel on the road. We might set up a little bit different to other people and some other things that obviously we've copied and we've followed along with because they work quite well. Um, the purpose of today's video is just to show you what we think was worth the money and what wasn't worth the money, what we'd buy again, what we might upgrade to in the future. And we're also going to talk about the four or five things that we find absolutely essential for travel um, things that we think that you really really need now i'm going to make it clear right now ali and i are not sponsored by we're not we're not promoting anybody we don't endorse and so we're not being endorsed by anybody this is all the gear that we worked hard for we saved our money to come out and use on the road and as i said before some things are brilliant some things proved to be a little bit of a flop but we'll show you those as we get through the video Alright, well we'll start with the car. We get a lot of questions on our car. We've got a 2020 Holden Colorado. It's the LTZ variant. We bought it at the end of Holden and the end of a financial year. So we got an exceptional deal on it, which was, uh, yeah, it was really good and it was really worth the price. And when we done our research about what sort of car we're going to buy, of course we looked at all of them. We looked at um, Hilux, we looked at Ford Rangers, Holden Colorado, Mitsubishi um, Triton. We didn't look at the Land Cruisers and that sort of stuff. They were just out of our ballpark for money. So we never ever thought that that was gonna be something that we could afford to buy. And then we got this for the price that we got it for. And I'll give you a hint. It was um, more than $43,000, but less than $45,000 brand new drive away. So that was a pretty good deal. Um, we knew that we'd have enough money left over in our budget to be able to make some changes or some modifications to the car to help it out because when I done the research about the different cars I wanted to drive I watched a lot a lot of reviews and I read a lot of reviews about the Holden Colorado I couldn't really find anything written bad about it in fact the only comment I ever heard was um, it doesn't have a diff locker in it so I'll put a diff locker in it that was pretty simple to do and the other thing was they have a problem with their torque converter we had a problem with ours it's been fixed haven't had a problem since we dragged the van around for another 30,000 k's after the torque converter was fixed and it all works perfectly for us so for us this is a great touring car and uh, like that for many, many other people that we meet. All right, so what we'll do is we'll take you for a walk around the car and um, just show you the gear that we had fitted on it. When we first bought it, the tear weight, or sorry, the, the curb weight was 2120 um, for the car. I think that's with about 10 litres of fuel inside of it and its oils. But the actual weight of the car with Allison and I on it and a full tank of fuel before we had all of this done to the car was 2,260 kilos. And at the end, after I've showed you all the things that we've done to the car and all the things that we have inside of it, I'll tell you how much it rolls down the road for today. So let's start at the front. Um, we went to ARB and we bought all of our gear there. I like their gear. It was a one-stop shop for us. Um, just made up life a whole lot easier. So we started out with a bull bar. The bull bar is their summit bull bar. I love the bar work on it. It looks really good. You get your um, driving lights and obviously all your indicators built into that. And the other reason that we got the summit bar is because we want to put a winch into it. So if you have a look over here, we've got the Bush Ranger winch. This is a 8,000 
This is an 8,000 kilo winch um, and that worked really well for us because we're thinking about if we ever have to remove the vehicle and the caravan, we want something that's capable of dragging the whole lot. So that worked out really well. The other thing we put on was some spotlights because obviously when you're out on country roads by night that you want to um, be able to see where you're going to. These work really well, they come with five settings on them. I'll drop in a picture of what the settings bar looks like but you can set it to five different levels. That range is obviously in the strength that it runs at. And we have a two-way radio fitted to the car. We use the GME. This is great. It comes with an app. You can check locations. If you've got friends who've got GMEs, you can see where they are. It's just, yeah, re really, really good. Really enjoy the communications we get from that. And it works for us just about everywhere that we've been so far. Just work our way down. Just follow me down now. Underneath here, we put some, um, some underbody protection on the car and also put a recovery point on there. Um, the reason to put the recovery point on there is obviously you need something to hook up to. You can't use those tie downs like um, you see cars come fitted with. This one here is rated to 8,000 kilos in any direction that you pull it in. So I didn't need to put two on. One was enough. I can pull it sideways, forwards, whatever the case may be. So that works really well. And just underneath the number plate is the uh, hook for the, um, for the winch. That works all right, doesn't it? All right, let's come around the side. Just follow me around now. All right, so just working our way up the side. Got the Safari snorkel on here. I really like these. Um, it works really well. We've had it up on the Cape and those places. All we do is just buy a sock to slow down the dust that might be coming in through the intake, and that's great. Um, tires, we use the Maxxis Razor ATs. Um, these are good uh, as an all-terrain tire. The size that I've got in here is a 265-65R18, which I think is equivalent to about 32 inches. It's just a good tyre. We've had these on now for about 30,000 kilometres and they're just wearing along nice and they're wearing along all evenly, which is always a good thing. Um, come up along a bit further on the side. We put on the clear view mirrors. Just pop around and take a photo from this side, Al. So put on the clear views. These are the Mark IIs. There she is. These are the Mark IIs. We use these because they hook up to your electrical system inside so I can adjust the mirrors from the inside. Blind spot mirror at the bottom. I love this blind spot mirror. When we first got the car, I, um, I had a few difficulties just getting used to driving with it, but now I've set it up so I can see the cars that are closer in my blind spot, but also watch the trailer wheels on the caravan while I'm driving just to make sure they're all still got rolling along nicely, and it just extends out. Pretty simple stuff. All right. Side steps with the Colorado, they're standard. Um, and then we just bought these visors. We about 100 bucks out of Holden. ARB also fitted for us the, um, the Rhino rack bars that you see on top here. We put these on here so we can support the solar panel. You see through there, Al? So we have a Red Arc solar panel on here. I think this one's about 100 watts. I'm not exactly sure, but I can uh, drop that in if I can find that out. And we carry four Max Tracks with us. Touch wood, we've never ever had to take these off the car to use for ourselves, but we've used them for other people a couple of times. So yeah, we always make sure we've got enough recovery gear to get ourselves out of the pup, just in case that we get in that pup. And just on the front, just want to pop back around here, Al. That's a night vision 50 inch um, light bar that's on the top there. That's from the stealth range. I've got these all around the car and I'll show you what else we've got as we go around. So we come down a little bit further. ARB base rack on top of the canopy. This thing's bloody brilliant. It has all of the um, interlocking tie downs and stuff that go with it. You can also buy a lot of parts. We've got the gas bottle carrier. Um, we don't use it a lot anymore since we stopped camping. Um, but we do have the jerry can holder on top there, which I always leave on there in case we need to carry extra fuel or water or whatever the case may be. Scattered around the car and the caravan, we've got all smalls. I use this a lot to just dry rags out or hang a tea towel on or whatever we're doing while we're camping. Sometimes I drive up the road with a pair of undies or something to hang off the side, whatever the case may be. <laughs> all right. Uh, side light is, uh, um, once again, it's night vision, it's the stealth light. The reason that we pick these is because they've got a seven year warranty on them and they, and they just go really well. I'll drop in some pictures of when it's all lit up around the car of a night. Um, ARB accent canopy, just work your way around. The reason we picked this canopy from ARB is because we liked that it was central door locking. So that when we lock the, the car, we also lock the, the ute as well. Um, in some of the older models, you had to come around and key lock all your windows and things like that. For me, that was just an extra step that I wasn't willing to take. But one thing you do need to be mindful of, if your car locks automatically and you've got your back window open on your canopy and you've got your keys in there and you close your window, 
then it locks and now you just lock your keys inside. So make sure you carry some spare sets with you. I've only done it once, but you learn the first time that you do it. With the Summit rear step on the back of the car, this works really well for us. These, um, these side guards here, they're ones that could just be thrown away if you damage them, if you're driving through a bit of four wheel drive stuff, so they can come off and just be easily replaced. The bar itself, we liked it because in the back here, let's pull the stone stomper out of the way. Just got a little guard here that protects the electronics that are inside. So 12 volt plug on this side, endo plug and the leads for our safety dive on the other side. So I'll give you a quick look around inside of our canopy. So I'll flip the camera around. Look, we've got a reasonably basic setup here. We've got a drawer system by ARB. We have a large drawer and a smaller drawer. The large drawer, um, you can slide the drawer all the way out, of course. Inside of that, we just keep all the things that we use on the road on a daily basis, same drills and stuff for putting the jack up on the caravan, some air hoses there for our onboard air compressor. It's got a stainless steel table which you can pull out. And obviously underneath that, you've got a bit more storage room. Just close that bloke up and push it all the way in. And if you don't want to pull it all the way out, you don't want to use the table. And we do this quite a bit, just pull the table out. It's great for morning tea or you're doing a sausage sizzle on the road. All works quite well. All right. The mid drawer, I just keep a fair bit of junk here to be honest with you. Um, I keep things that I use regularly. So here's the um, the spanner that I use to do up my toe nut. Um, I always find a reason to be belting something in with a hammer. Torque wrenches in there because we check the tyres every week. Bit of Sikaflex, just the stuff that you might need on a day to day. Definitely need some mozzie coils from time to time. All right, so pop that one away. The fridge itself, it just slides out. Um, this is a 95 litre dual zone Dometic fridge. It works really well. I house it to store some bread today and beer in the back. On the front of that, I got this from Navigator. Look, that's been great. It's actually for something that's supposed to go inside the car, but it fit over the handle of the fridge. And I use it for all our sunblock and mozzie repellents and the other things that we need from time to time around the back of the car. Hand sanitizer, particularly after you've been changing the toilet cassette. Um, over on this side, this is where all of our electrics are housed. So. In underneath here, we've got a 100 amp Invicta battery. We've had it in there for about three years. It works really, really well. All runs off the solar panel at the front and through a DC, uh, BC to DC charger, um, which is a red arc one, while we're driving along in the car. I've got an inverter in the car. It's a 1,000 watt. It sits up underneath there on the first aid box and it powers, and it's on at the moment, it powers our Starlink. Um, Work our way a little bit further down, a couple of USBs, got a sink socket in there, permanent source for the fridge or a permanent power source for the fridge, that all works perfectly well. And then I was putting some an extra panel down the bottom here, switches for our, our work lights around the um, canopy and an ando plug outlet there if we need to plug something in to run it off an ando plug. On the other side, this is just our air control. So the car's fitted with airbag man um, airbags. Uh, these have been great, particularly in helping to level the van up to a good ride height when we're travelling around. And then below that, I have our ARB compressor controls, um, on-off switch, and just where we plug the air hose into, we've got the ARB dual compressor inside. Last couple of things on the car. We've done a GVM upgrade um, post-registration through ARB. We've got the old man EMU suspension fitted in here. Works great. GVM was upgraded by another 150 kilos and I had the rear axle re-rated to 2,000 kilos, which has uh, worked very, very well, particularly for towing. And engine modifications, we didn't make too many. The only thing that I've done is I put a set of dip breathers in it for when we do water crossings, and I also put a pre-fuel filter into it. I didn't worry about um, a trans cooler or having an engine remapped or any of those sorts of things. I didn't think it was necessary. And now that we've been towing around for, geez, 12 months, the hottest my gearbox has ever got to is 99 degrees. It generally sits around 92 and Holden says that's well within its parameters. So quite happy to keep trundling along the way that we're going. The thing we're going with is the caravan. Um, look, pretty standard as far as van go. We've done an internal tour of the van before. We just never got around to doing the external tour of the van. So we thought we'd tie that in with the car and a few other things today. But just starting at the front, We've got a DO35 hitch on here. I won't move it because we've got a Covex lock in there and that's alarmed. Um, since the day we bought the caravan, every single time that we unhook the car away from the caravan, I put the Covex lock on it straight away. It's not an anti-theft, but it is a good deterrent. So certainly something we do all the time. I'm not going to move it now because it'll set the bloody alarm off. All right, um, before we go further back, handbrake. This is integral to the um, DO35 hitch. And then as we come a little bit further back, in here we've got a navigator bag and we use that just to protect all of our leads so we've got the ando plug there we've got the 12 pin plug and we've also got the leads 
for our safety dive camera on the back of the caravan. I'll show you that when we get around the back. All right. Boss Jockey, um, we really like the Boss Jockey because we had a standard jockey wheel on here that we got from factory. I'm gonna be very, very honest with you. It was absolute rubbish. It bent. Um, we're at Mitchell and we're staying at the Neil Turner Weir. We unhooked and I've got to say, some of it was our fault because we hadn't chocked the wheels on the van. We let the van go away. The van moved slightly because the jockey was down. It actually moved it and it bent the jockey wheel. So we replaced it as soon as we could. We put on the Boss Jockey. This is a really good one. We bought it with the extension. Just pop the camera down here. So we bought it with the extension that covers the spot where you might have had the wheel. Um, it has got no wheel on it now, and I just carry these two blocks of timber around with me. And um, that just keeps it really stable. And the big lesson we learned is before we unhitch anything, we get around, we chock all the wheels. So lesson learned, cost us 400 bucks to find out, but it works great, and I'm glad we got it. Okay. Um, couple of nine kilo gas cylinders on here. These are great. Each gas cylinder probably lasts us, what do you reckon? Oh, hang on, Alison has got a microphone on. Um, each gas cylinder probably lasts us about six to eight weeks depending on our, our usage for gas in the colder months we find they don't last quite as long but in the summer they seem to kick along all right we put an extended a-frame on the on the front of the caravan and the reason we had to do that is because we put the toolbox on here so standard from factory this didn't come with a toolbox and it had a shorter a-frame on there um, look i really enjoy it the toolbox was well worth the extra money that we paid to have that put on it could be a standard fixture to the van now i'm not 100 percent sure and you would have seen in one of our videos in the past that we fixed our Starlink to the front of the toolbox. This works magnificently. We drive up and down the highway, always connected to the internet. It's really, really good. All right, let's come around to this side on the toolbox. Inside here, we just keep our gas barbecue. So there's our Weber. He lives in there. That's good. On the other side, I won't open it up, but on the other side, we got got... Um, our, we've got a bit of firewood in there because it keeps it dry and I've also got the chainsaw in there and an air blower and all that sort of gear so that works and I've got the fire pit in there too that works quite well uh, we don't try and put a lot of weight in this end because obviously that's all adding to your ball weight when you get down the front here if I can say one thing about this toolboxing the one thing that I really really dislike is the location of this lock here because when you want to close it it's easy to do but when you want to put a key in there and lock it you've got your jerry cans in the front there it's almost impossible. It's one of the most frustrating things that I do around the caravan. All right, so we'll come around to the other side. Follow me around now. All right, this side, obviously tunnel boots, standard in all the caravans that you come to. Um, checker plate base inside of it. Lights inside, really, really good. I've got the keys on the other side. I'll show you that when we get there. It's got the Swift hot water system on here. This is gas. Um, look, this works quite well. Um, we had a little problem with it recently in that on gas it wouldn't light. We're still trying to resolve that at the moment, but it does light on electricity. So what we do at the moment while we're away is we just fire up the inverter, run it for half an hour. That heats it and it keeps the water hot for oh, at least four or five hours after. So if we heat it in the afternoon, it's good for showers a little bit later on the evening. Two filler points for the, um, for the water underneath. Two 95 litre tanks under there. It gives you a total of... Um, was that 190 litres of water but we've showed you before that's not exactly what you get you only really get about 160 usable litres keep coming along now that's just the vent for the batteries underneath the seat vent for the um, fridge inside remember we've got the Dometic 224 litre um, fridge it's really really good it only runs off electricity or the battery inside uh, cassette hatch and on here we got a SOG. We put the SOG in about three months ago. This has been great. Just extracts the smell from the toilet out. Um, yeah, it just made life a lot more pleasurable inside the van. Although the other day I went out, I don't know what I'd done, but we left the hatch open or left a little slider open in there. And when we come home, because the van had been locked up there, you can imagine what that smelled like. All right. And just at the back here, got a rear um, storage. I think uh, Marvel sell this off as a, like a generator box or something, but I just keep stuff in there like our Stuff we don't use a lot like there's flippers and snorkels and a few weights and that sort of stuff in there but not a great deal work our way around to the back spare tire obviously we added these jerry can holders we got these from probar um in Kabulcha. these are good they're 115 bucks each we carry our water on the back here one thing that we found out while we were traveling is because we extended the back of the van with these we had to come and put some of these um reflectors on there so i went down to super cheap bought some reflectors and just stuck them on Everything should be good. I've had no hassles with the cops anyway, so that's good. 
ARB bag on the back, we use this for our rubbish. In fact, 99.9% .9 of the time we use this for recycling. So we have this full of tin cans and plastic bottles, that sort of stuff. And normally when we get to a big town and we can do a recycle, we just get rid of all our tins. It's a good way to save money for your next carton of beer. Have a look up the top there, Al. There's the back of our Safety Dave camera. Um, Safety Dave's good. I've never driven without the Safety Dave on there, but I find it beneficial when we're driving, or particularly when we're reversing up close to things like trees or fences and things like that, because it's got two angles in there, one for further back for cars behind you, and the other one shows you to about here, and you can see where the back of the van is in relation to stuff, so I really enjoy that. And on this side, we've obviously got another jerry can holder, and I just put some buckets over the top there. Sometimes when you go to places, we don't like to contain the grey water. Um, and if their rule is only to catch it, then we'll catch it in these buckets and we just go and empty it. Um, that way you don't have your grey water tank stinking all the time, which is um, pretty handy because they bloody get on the hooter. All right. Come around a bit further, Al. Outside here, just on the side of the van, there's two speakers here for our Fusion sound system, and we've got the Dometic awning. So... This awning's been great. Um, we have it up just about every day of the week when we're away. We are able to hold it up most of the time in winds, just pop it over here, because we bought ourselves a set of ground dogs. Um, there's a thousand different tie-down systems that you can buy for awnings. We find that this one works really well. The only thing I will say, there's two things that I will say. We bought um, some uh, sand pegs for these, and I'm pretty sure they're the ones that come from ground dog they wouldn't go into the sand here. All they did was just dig a bigger hole. So I got rid of those, and I just got the old sand peg that you, that you hammer in. I'll drop in pictures of these things anyway. And the other one was, on the corners of the mat here, you can see I've got um, that bolted in. That's one of my ground dog screws that normally I'd hold this down with. But the ones that they give you from ground dog, and I'll cut pictures of these, and they're about this big, and they snapped. They weren't real sturdy at all. So, yeah, weren't happy with those ones, but we've just, we just put in much bigger ones. All right. Could come along the side, you can see we've been sitting out here, so we, and this is where we normally spend a lot of our days. Um, drop down table on the side here, 240 volt outlet for running appliances out here if you want to run your, um, I don't know, your induction cooker, or I normally put the rice cooker out here and cook a bit of rice so it doesn't steam up the caravan. Uh, SIG socket for 12 volt, and it's also got the aerial plug out here if you want to bring a TV out and you still have an aerial on your van. We've removed ours. And then it's just uh, the bracket to hold the TV on. I'll sit out here and watch many, many Panthers victories. Okay. Well, the camera just overheated, so we're going to just pick up where we were. So the other thing is the van comes standard with a single step. We bought this step at Audi. It's a ripper, isn't it? It is good. Yeah, I've mic'd her up now. All right, so, <laughs> um, yeah, that's really good. It costs us like 50 bucks, and I think that's like a no, half. I'm going to correct you. It costs you 39.99. There you go, 39.99. <laughs> I think um, we saw them at BCF, they're over $100 for the same bloody step, so yeah, and it works great, we use it every day of the week. Um, and final thing as we come around, just watch me head there, it's just the tunnel boot, same on the other side, it does go all the way through, it's full of rubbish at the moment. But in here we just keep like, you know, our spare tables, our levelers, and that sort of gear. Alright, that's pretty simple. Other things around the van that we didn't speak about when we went around was just, um, the really big windows that you get on the marble vans, they're great. They bring a lot of daylight inside, so you don't have to use a lot of electricity or power to run your lights inside, particularly during the day. They, they're great. And the other thing was, just on the front here, this is the one thing that I did forget, we opted to have that in, but that's now a standard inclusion of front window on one of these caravans. And I tell you what, you come to places like this and you crack that front window and the breeze blows through the van, it's worth every bloody cent you paid for it, I can assure you of that, particularly on a hot day. It is nice. It is, it's really good. All right, well, are you going to dive under the van or am I? Uh, I'll let you do that one. All right, let's turn the camera off and I'll get underneath the van and show you what we've got underneath. Okay, so underneath the van, you get a clearer picture now. You can see I've been around with a pool noodle and I've been putting around all the pipes and fittings and stuff that I thought uh, might be prevalent to a rock strike, haven't had any problems, they've been on there for nearly 12 months now. But the thing I want to show you underneath here was our suspension. This is uh, Tico suspension, it's the dual shock coil spring, um, and this is great, it rides along really, really well on the road. We don't get any trailer sway, in fact the 
bench, it sits perfectly in behind the car. But something that's different about this one is this is airbag ready. So when we bought the van, um, and you have to make this decision when you buy your van or they're building your van, we decided to go ahead with this type of suspension simply because if we want to do a future upgrade, then we could put airbags into the van because we knew at the time it's going to be very hard for us to save money while we're travelling around Australia to buy a new van. So we thought about what we could do to maybe make some upgrades a little bit later on and we're going to talk about all those sorts of things very, very soon. One thing about caravan life, is um, inevitably you'll come outside at some point and we, we spend a lot of time outside we try and make that as comfortable as we can for ourselves um, and you also got to be mindful of it being waterproof and stuff like that and your those just those wet days we have covers and things that we have for the awning here it's not an annex but it's one of those sunshade type things we never put it up it's brand new in the bag inside the tunnel but one day we'll get it out and you'll see it because you'll see it appear one day on one of our, <laughs> our shows but what we do use outside because the last thing you want to do is walk outside inside because it's a very annoying under feet is we just use a mat and we use a couple of muck mats so we use the um what's this one l the sea gear mat it is the sea gear mat yes we bought it from uh well, no mate. snowies we bought it from snowies we yes. bought it from snowies and like everything we waited till it was on special i think it was around boxing day or something like that we might have bought this one it was like half the price so that was really good i can't remember exactly what we paid for it but it wouldn't have been any more than about 200 bucks less than that less than that yeah and it works really well when you come to these sandy sorts of locations the dirt just goes through it but it doesn't come back up so yeah that's really good the only thing that we use outside the van is a muck mat and then just inside the door of the van we got the step muck mat and it sort of gives you it gives you a couple levels doesn't it of um of protection for dirt going inside the van and you don't realize how good the one outside is until you take it away and only use the one inside because then you start to feel stuff going inside the caravan you do and when you shake them out you realize just how much they're collecting oh yeah if i remember to do it at the end of um next week's video i'll shake it out when we're leaving the beach here just to show you what we got on and that's walking over the mat and we are on a bit of grass here but yeah it certainly slows a lot of stuff down but you've got to try and make life comfortable as possible for yourself don't you you do you do and it is helpful and it's it it, it makes life easier and it again, does and we got it on a special as well at anaconda i think that one uh yeah this one we got an anaconda and then when we bought the caravan <laughs> we negotiated it like a starter type pack um through them to get like your hoses and your sullage hoses um, and that sort of gear and they gave us a muck mat in that pack as well i think they up, they changed their um their package they from something. the time we we signed up to the time we got the van so yeah. that was a nice surprise so, right. cool. so that is the uh tour of the outside of our car and our caravan we really hope that that answered a lot of questions for people remember it's not the inside tour you need to follow the link in the description for that one um yeah but if you've got any other questions about the car or the caravan please just hit us up in the comments section and the other thing that we said we'd speak about today in no particular order is the four or five things that we think are essential to making full-time travel on the road worthwhile and enjoyable. Yes. Yep. So in no particular order, our first one we've got on our list is just have a good lithium system. So if you want to power your van and power your appliances and enjoy caravan life to its fullest, then just invest in a good lithium system, yeah? A good lithium system yeah, uh, is helpful. Or uh, There are some other portable ba uh, battery systems as well, so depending on your form of travel. Yeah, for sure. But for us, we've got 400 amps of lithium with 720 watts of solar on the roof. It all works good for us. We can run all the appliances that we bring along with us and we live comfortably on the road with it. Yes, we do. It's pretty good. All right, what's your next one now? Uh, good communication. So for us, we have the UHF in the ute. Uh, we also have some handheld um, uh, walkie-talkies uh, where we can communicate with each other. Uh, we have our mobile phones and we do have different providers uh, as well as Starlink. So that's what we've got, but we're also thinking about uh, so when we go away from the van, say do some hikes, especially in WA, what other forms of communication we might need because I'm thinking mobile phones won't work and Starlink of course is not portable so something to look into for us. Yeah we'll just do some research on that if we decide to buy something in the future like um, for example I don't know an EPIRF or mm. something like that then we'll just let you know but at the moment for us there's no requirement for it when we get when we get out away from the caravan or the car. No. 
Yes, that's pretty good. It's been very good. Yeah. Um, and Starlink, and that's the other thing about Starlink, it allows us to do what we do. So it allows me to do the edits and upload the videos. It allows Alison to work on the road. And we've always got communications, don't we? We always have communications and we get to also communicate with our family and keep them up to date where we are and what we're up to. So they have peace of mind as well. Definitely. All right, next one. Make sure you bring enough safety gear with you to get yourself out of the poop if you get in the poop. And what I mean by that is make sure you've got good recovery gear. Because at some point, inevitably, you're going to get bogged or you're going to get stuck somewhere and mm. you're going to need to pull yourself out. So for us, we have the winch which we showed you on the front of the car. And we also carry all the snatch straps and I've got D shackles and all of the things that I might need to drag us out. And most importantly, make sure if you do fit a winch to your car, it's got the capability to pull all of you out, not just part of you out. Otherwise, yes. you're going to get yourself in a maybe a worse situation when you do that. But mm. other sorts of safety gear that we carry out? Uh, so we've got the Max Tracks as well. Um, that helps with getting us out. We've also got our first aid kits, and we have one in the van, and we have one in the car. As well, we've got um, the ones that we take in our backpack when we walk away from the caravan and cars. So the normal first aid kit and the snake bite kit. Yeah, we and it just makes good sense to carry those things when you go out walking. We do live in Australia with, I think, uh, the top 10 venomous snakes in the world. So if in the very unlikely chance that you encounter a snake, let alone mm -hmm. get bitten by a snake, at least you've got something there to start that first aid process. Yes, we do. Which is pretty good. Cool. Okay, so the next thing on our list, Al, is bring some creature comforts. Yes, so for me, I bought some books. Uh, we also bought along some puzzle books. I think for Steve, bought along his fishing gear. And we've also got like the pool noodles and some flow, you know, the blow up uh, swimming gear that you can get when you're, you know, in creeks and, and can sit and paddle and enjoy the nice cool water. Yeah. So for that, for us, that was really kind of the comfort, creature comforts that we bought along. Um, but for you, have a think about what you like to do at home and maybe bring some of those with you. Yeah, for sure, because what you like at home, obviously you're gonna love when you come on the road. Yes, definitely. All right, that's great. Um, next one, oh, okay. When you're going to buy things, because there's a lot of things you need to buy when you're setting up for caravan life, particularly if you're like us and you started from scratch, and there's so many YouTube people and advertisers and stuff, and they're just throwing gear and information at you, and you've got to try and wade through that to pick what's right for you without spending millions and millions of dollars yes. to get there. Um, so the little tip I've written here is buy once and buy right. And the only way to do that is to research it. So what did we do, Al? Um, so for us, uh, like Steve said, we, we looked at a lot of uh, people traveling um, and we looked at the things they had and we made a list. And then as time went on, we worked out really what we did want uh, and what we didn't really need and prioritized that list as, you know, must haves would nice to be have. And also we had stuff from our camping our camping life as well so we utilize those things as well um but as things come to their natural life next time we came to um get it we we looked at um if we needed it and what was the best quality so on the market and from that throughout the year uh, as the sales came up we went and looked touched felt those items and um you know if it was a good deal then we we bought them yeah you do get to the point where you stand and you actually justify it so you've you've looked at it you touched it you felt it mm. you think yeah i like this and then you sit there and you think to yourself but do i really need it that's true yeah it that's is. what you got to think will yeah. i really need it exactly and you'll find very very quickly in caravan life and we did after a few months mm. it doesn't take long before you're saying hang on we've never used this and you're starting to offload some of that gear yes yeah all right so yep that's great um for sales wise and as we said we buy everything when it's on sale not because we're cheap it's just smart um, yeah, you have more bang for your buck and you've got exactly. some more dollars to go and buy some other stuff. Exactly. <laughs> and we target at different times of the year. So if we wanted tools and stuff, it was around Father's Day. Yes, we do. Um, yeah, camping points. gear is um, camping gear's Easter. Yeah. It's, a, it's a good one. Boxing Day sales, of course. I think we mm. bought our sea gear mat on a Boxing Day we sale. Do. We got like 50% off that. So, yeah, just shop around and get yourself some good bargains because, as we said, it's quite expensive caravanning life when you're setting up. Yes, it can be. Alrighty. Things that you'd buy again, Al? Uh, for me, definitely the Sirocco fans inside the van, they, they run, run off the 12 volt and um, they definitely keep you cool. So they were a good investment and uh, you see them around more in different uh, stores and they're often on sale. So that's a good thing. Yeah. And I think the sea gear mat slash muck mats outside because 
uh, it gives you a nice area to be outside not treading in mud or sand if you don't want to and plus it stops the outside coming in so that's a that's a real big positive it certainly is yeah and for me um i really enjoy the sog now we only fitted that about three months ago but that's proved to be fantastic so far it um it really extracts that smell that comes from the chemical toilet yes. so much so you don't even notice anymore so that's been a great little buy for us it has been and the other thing that i really enjoy is our starlink because it gives us the freedom to do what we do with you guys every week we share our youtube videos yes and allows ali to do her work online it does and i think also to keep in contact with our family which gives them um, peace of mind that we're all good and they know where we are yes exactly and a quick shameless plug ali's bass and bookkeeping services <laughs> shameless plug <laughs> all right so um yeah that's been an absolute great thing for us and when we don't want communications we just want to have some time on our own and enjoy the beach like we're sitting on right now we just turn it all off Yes, you it's can. pretty simple, isn't it? No, I think Starlink's come along at the right. Like, well, we started travelling when Starlink really started to take off, so it's it's been a good um, thing for us. We've not experienced any other sort of um, communications. Okay. All right. One thing from you that we didn't buy right, and we now have to buy twice. I think for us, we have the solar blanket. It is an Audi one, and it does do a good job, don't get me wrong. Um, but we do use it more than, you know, the occasional time. So not necessarily once a day, but not just once a month either. So I think in hindsight, we should have bought maybe a better quality one. And I know when we're at the caravan show, I saw the Red Arc ones, they were on special. I really wanted to buy it at the time, uh, and we didn't. And I. It, hindsight says I wish we had one, but so now that we are going to have to buy a new one, I think we're going to go middle of the range, maybe hardcore. It's going to be um, the value, the price, and the output. Hopefully, will be a, a happy match, and it will be a good match. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and for me, it's just the canopy on the back of the car. When we first bought it, we bought it because we were camping, we were tenting. Places like we are now at Tiwa or over at Fraser or just a couple of national parks around Brisbane well. and it worked really well for us. But now we're full-time travel on the road. I'd like a better setup. I'd probably like one of those canopies that open up at the sides just so I can put a fridge in there and some drawers, set up a kitchen, just make it a little bit more user-friendly for when we're driving yeah, I around. I think the needs have kind of changed between the two different styles yeah. of camping slash being full-time on the road. So, yeah. Definitely. But I suppose the biggest tip we can give you at the end of all of it is get out and try it for yourself. Hmm, if definitely. You're, if you're purchasing a van at the moment, then do your research, think about the gear that you want, think about the gear that you actually need, hmm. and go out and get those things. Hmm. Um, try and talk your, um, your caravan dealer into a deal. So they give you things like your hoses and your electrical leads because all of these things add cost and we had them all thrown as a bundle at the start, which was great. It was very helpful. Yeah, it was really, really yeah. good. But the biggest thing about this is such an enjoyable lifestyle. It is a bit, it's, it is very enjoyable, yeah. It is. So yeah, you have a new front yard every single day of the week. Yes, you can. All right. Well, that's the end of this week's episode for us. It's a little bit different for us, this one we know. We really love our blogging about travel and things like that. So you're not going to see too many of these episodes at all, are you? No, no. Definitely showing you the different places of Australia is far more enjoyable. If you like today's episode, make sure you hit a like. Oh, hit the like button. Um, subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. And welcome to all of our new subscribers. We've had a lot of people join us recently. And we're very, very thankful for that. Yes, we are. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. We do appreciate it. Don't forget to hit us up with a comment. You have yourself a great week. We'll see you next Saturday at 9 o'clock. Bye-bye. See you next week.